Good afternoon, and thank you for joining today's webinar where we will be taking a look at ShipCenter, our all-in-one shipping tool. Um, we'll go through a couple of slides, and then we'll dive right into a demo and take a look at some of the great functionality we've built into this. My name is Matt Greyerbill. I'm a sales engineer here with SalesPad. And as we go throughout the demo today and throughout the webinar, uh, please feel free to ask any questions. Uh, there's a question box. Please feel free to use that. Uh, we'll go through those at the end of the webinar and make sure that we respond accordingly. Uh, anything that we can't respond to right away, we'll make sure we take your information down and we, uh, we get a response back to you. Uh, so just kind of going through this, uh, this slide presentation, um, the title, Increase Accuracy and Efficiency in Your Shipping Operations with the brand new Ship Center, that really sums up what we're doing here. With the all-in-one Ship Center uh, module, we're going to really uh, transform your shipping operation by allowing you to do all of the required functions, uh, processing the sales documents, getting the labels from your, your shipping providers, your carriers, and then sending those on into invoicing queues for, for final posting. You're going to be able to do all of that within the Ship Center product. So uh, we'll just kind of go through this slide presentation and then we'll jump right into the demo. So just starting with ShipCenter and what it is, uh, ShipCenter is really a complete shipping solution. So uh, like I said, you're going to be, be able to bring your sales documents into this uh, ShipCenter environment, process out the shipments, generate the labels, all without having to have uh, a third-party application running in the background, such as UPS WorldShip or FedEx Ship Manager. Uh, we have additional new and, new and improved functionality that we've added. Uh, one of those things that I'll highlight today is the ability to uh, shop rates all within the sales pad desktop environment. Uh, it's important to note that in order to do that, you do have to have the Ship Center uh, license turned on. Um, we support several uh, parcel carriers, and I'll kind of go through a couple lists here in just a second. And uh, we also support the rate quoting for LTLs, and I want to make an important distinction here. Uh, we don't allow you to generate the full shipments for the LTL carriers within Ship Center, uh, but we do support pulling in those rates so you can effectively quote out uh, different options to customers. You would just still need to go through the portal or wherever you're accessing the LTL carrier setup uh, as you're doing today. Um, also important to note, this does not replace Ship2, so if you're currently using Ship2, you can continue to do so. Uh, it's still a great product. Um, it still has widespread application, um, can still achieve a lot of what you're looking for, especially in lower volume shipping environments. Uh, so that's, that's still available. Uh, Ship Center is just kind of the advanced, more encompassing uh, shipping product that we now have available. Just going in briefly to the list of supported carriers, so we have uh, UPS, FedEx, uh, USPS or stamps.com. We also do Purolator and uh, GSO, and that's on the parcel side. Now, as far as the rates that we can support for the LTL carriers, uh, we do pull in UPS, FedEx, SAIA, USF Holland, XPO, as well as YRC. And again, uh, that's just the rates. We'll pull those in for reference. So if you need to quote out uh, LTL pickups with your customers, you'll have access to those rates. Um, at this point, we'll, uh, we'll transition over to the demo, and uh, again, we have that question box up as we go through this and show the functionality here. Uh, please use that question box, and we'll make sure we get answers to you uh, at the conclusion of the webinar today. Okay, so transitioning now to the uh, demo portion, I've got my Ship Center login pulled up, and I'm going to go ahead and log in and uh, bring up the Ship Center environment. And uh, there's really two, two areas uh, within Ship Center. There's the application side and then there's the setup side. And uh, we'll kind of go through each one of these objects one by one. And then we'll kind of walk through a, a, a typical order workflow uh, within Ship Center. Uh, in other words, we're going to we're gonna bring up an order, we're going to process the shipment, uh, generate the labels, and show how that can appear on an end of day report and how we would handle that all within Ship Center. Uh, we can also do things like forwarding as well, and I'll show that here today. So when we complete a shipment, you know, what batch do we want that order to, uh, to, to end up in? Um, so we'll kind of uh, show how you can set that up on the back end and how that looks uh, as, you, uh, as you process that order. Uh, so starting first on the setup side, we have the, the shipping sources. And this is where you're going to point Ship Center to, to look to bring in your sales document information. And in this case, I have it set to look at my SalesPad GP environment. 
Um, and, and from this screen, we can do a number of things uh, that can be very helpful uh, for streamlining and efficiency gains. Uh, so when we open up our shipping source editor, the first thing we see is our shipping source options. And uh, this is where uh, we can point this to look at a specific batch or a specific document ID or a specific sales document type within SalesPad to pull over for shipment processing. Um, we also have the ability to set on finished shipment pr uh, uh, parameters such as, you know, what batch do we want the order to move to uh, once the shipment's processed on it. And in this case, I have it set to move to an invoicing batch. So we can set those types of properties up here uh, with this first tab in the shipping source editor. Uh, other additional things that we can do are source field mappings, uh, both for read and write. Uh, so if you want to pull specific information as reference over from SalesPad, uh, from the sales document into ShipCenter, uh, you can do that. And if you want additional information to write back from the sales document once it's processed back in uh, to SalesPad, you can, you can go both ways with the mapping on that. Um, we also have the ability to do uh, shipping line level mappings as well. So um, we, can, we can set up a lot of robust uh, mapping back and forth uh, with the shipping source editor. Um, going into shipping methods, so this is where we're going to essentially define the method within SalesPad and then what method with each of the carriers that we have supported in our environment uh, that's going to correspond to. So in my demo, demo environment today, I have a local delivery method that is set to map to uh, UPS's standard ground service. Uh, if you want to create a new uh, mapping, you would just hit new. Um, taking a look at the mapping uh, specifically, you can see that this is kind of the setup on the back end. Uh, so we're going to pull in uh, the shipping method that we have defined in the sales pad environment uh, from the shipping source ID and then match that over to the, uh, the carrier ID and uh, the, the, the type of service that that would apply to. So, uh, so pretty, pretty basic setup there. Um, we also have country references, uh, which will allow you to map country codes back and forth uh, more accurately, so that can be an additional tool to use. Uh, we also have packaging setup, so if you have uh, you know, a certain set of corrugated or, or Gaylord boxes that you like to use, uh, you can set up new packages and you can even put pack weights and things like that, dimensional information. Uh, so these are, are some of the packages that I've predefined in my environment to use. And uh, I'll kind of show you as we go through the order workflow and processing the shipment, how those can come into play to kind of uh, enhance the, uh, the shipping environment. Uh, last thing on the setup side is the carriers. And uh, there's a lot of options with the carriers that you can, you can utilize. Um, and I'll just open up my carrier. In this case, I have UPS set up. Um, so when I open up my UPS setup, I have all the different carrier options, uh, the, the company address that that corresponds to for my account, my shipper number, all that reference information is there on the main setup. Uh, but we also have additional tools uh, that can be very helpful, such as rate adjustment. So if you want the right back rate to be uh, list price for the shipment or your on account uh, based rate, you can determine between the two what you want to write back to the sales document. So that could be a nice helpful tool. Uh, if for example, you want to, uh, maybe you've negotiated a better rate with your carrier and you want to preserve that uh, additional margin and you just want to pass on, pass on the list rates to your clients, uh, that's, that's something that you can, uh, you can go ahead and set up there. Uh, we also have markup amounts, markup percentages, uh, uh, rounding options. So if there's any additional padding and, and handling fees, and handling percentages uh, that you want to kind of bake into your, your uh, shipping fees, you can do that um, on the carrier setup. So, so pretty, pretty uh, robust tools on that side to kind of protect margins, uh, pad shipments if you want to incorporate any kind of handling fees. Now on the application side, and I'm just going to close a few of these windows out. On the application side, we have uh, these, these four different navigation points. So the shipment screen, uh, this is going to display all of the shipments that you've processed uh, from ShipCenter. So as with any grid and sales pad, you have these great auto filter features. So for example, if you wanted to look up a specific date, uh, you could begin plugging in that date and filter down the shipments to that specific period. Um, you can see if it's a new or if it's shipped and what carrier type that uh, it went out on. Um, so that's some of the functionality there. 
Um, additionally, if you found a shipment on here that you need to actually void out, we do have that ability as well. So I can go into a document number, open up that shipment, and I have this void feature if I want to go ahead and void that shipment out. If, it, uh, if, if I need to make an adjustment, maybe the customer called and they have an additional item that needs to go in the box and we need to void this and process a new label, um, I can go ahead and void that as well. Um, moving on to the shipment monitor. So shipment monitor is going to give you a view at the uh, queue or queues that you've defined uh, to look at for all the orders that are ready for shipment. Uh, so in this case, I have a shipping queue uh, that I'm looking at and it displays all of the current orders that are in that shipping queue uh, that I can then go ahead and proceed to process. This is kind of the main screen that you live in in order to uh, pull up sales documents and process the shipments out. Uh, we also have a new shipment screen, so if you want to just generate a new shipment, uh, you have the ability to do that. And we also have carrier end of day reports that we can generate, and I'll show you as I process a few of these uh, shipments that we can also generate that as well. So now that we've seen all of the different objects on the application side and the setup, uh, let's go ahead and jump back to the shipment monitor, which I mentioned is really kind of the main screen that you start in to, to jump off and generate all of your shipments. Uh, so from here, I've got my, my uh, shipping queue that I'm looking at, and I can go ahead and uh, double click on a specific document, and I can open that up, and it's going to bring all of the sales document information over to the new shipment screen. So you can see uh, when I open that up, it brought over standard ground, uh, the uh, shipment date that this needs to happen on, uh, the customer, uh, the order number, um, all of that information is pre-populated. It also brought in the items uh, that were uh, sold to that customer on that order. In this case, it was uh, one item number 3705 that was sold, um, and I've got visibility of it there. So to, to go about processing the shipment, there's a, a couple different ways that you can approach that in ShipCenter. So we do have a scale integration. Um, so if you do have like a USB scale that you're using, uh, we do have this scale option where we can just read the weights off of your scale uh, with the parcel sitting on it. And then you can go ahead and just uh, process your labels based on the weights that are on the scale. Uh, you'll see that I don't have a, a scale attached today, so it gives me this message. But we do have that integration, so I wanted to uh, just kind of uh, share that. Um, another way to do it is to define your packages and then use the item weights that are assigned to the item maintenance card within the G, uh, GP sales pad environment. Um, and to do that, we can, we can go uh, a couple different ways. So we have this package type uh, selection screen. Uh, if you do have touch screens deployed in your ship, shipping environment, this works very well. So you can uh, essentially select the package by just tapping on the screen. And in my case, I just have these uh, three packages, which if you'll recall, I showed you on the setup side where I have just a small, medium, large, and I've got some basic uh, dimensional information communicated on, on the uh, description as well. Uh, so I can go ahead and select that box, and you can see it updates the dimensions for this shipment. It also brought in a weight, which is my padded weight that I've applied to that particular box. Uh, once I have that box selected, I can go into my item uh, selection process, and I can go ahead and highlight the item that I want to move to the package that I've defined. Um, through uh, sending to uh, the existing package option. If I wanted to do another package, I could actually say send a new package and define an additional package here as well. Uh, since I pre-selected my, my package on the package selection screen, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, let's send this to the existing package. Um, that item is now in that package. I can go ahead and hit OK. Um, that's going to generate a, uh, a total weight for me. So I've got a weight of 29 pounds. Uh, with a box dimension of 18 by 18 by 14. Uh, so this all looks good. I can go ahead and click Finish Shipment. And when I uh, click Finish Shipment, um, I have it set to actually prompt me where if I want to extend retail rates or if I want to use the requested uh, uh, standard list rates, I can do that. I'm just going to go ahead and hit No and uh, process this shipment. And once I've done that, we'll see a, a UPS label generated here on my screen. And uh, there it is. So again, uh, the big idea within ShipCenter is you're operating in one environment. I didn't have to go out to UPS World Ship. I don't have any third-party applications running in the background. I simply applied the, the weights to the package in ShipCenter and then finished the shipment and grabbed the label. So uh, it's really an all-in-one solution that will allow you to do all the functions that are required in your shipping environment from this one platform. So I'm going to go ahead and click off of that 
and uh, show a couple other uh, features that we've added in. So um, as I mentioned, we have uh, rate quoting functionality that extends to desktop. We also have rate quoting functionality within uh, the ship center environment. So I'm gonna close out of that and I'll, I'll generate a new uh, shipment label and show you what that rate quoting feature looks like within uh, the ship center environment. So I've opened up a new shipment. I'm gonna go ahead and select my package. Let's just do another large box and I'm gonna assign my items to it. In this case, I have uh, two items. So I'm gonna take this first one and send it to that existing package that I had to find. I'll go to my second item and send that to the same package as well. Uh, so now I've got my weight, so it's a nine pound package. I have this actions tab up at the top and one of the actions is to compare rates. So since this is a parcel carrier, I'll go ahead and compare rates for the parcel side. And uh, when you do that, you'll see this rate comparison tab open up uh, that will go ahead and go out to all the carriers that you have defined and all of the different shipment services that they have available. It will calculate based on that weight, the shipment amount. It will also uh, provide you with an estimated arrival date for those shipments. So in my demo environment, I just have the UPS uh, test account set up, uh, but you can see when I did the get rate, it's showing me ground, next day air, early AM, air saver, second day, second day air, as well as three day select. And then I have the uh, various shipment amounts along with the estimated ship dates. So um, we, have, uh, we, we, we have the ability to essentially bring all that information in. So if you do have a client that calls and uh, says, you know what, this turned into an expedite situation. I need this a lot earlier than I anticipated. You know, how much is it gonna cost to get it here next day early AM? You can come into this rate comparison screen and effectively communicate that back to the client all within one application without having to leave this environment. So uh, that rate comparison tool can be a very powerful um, uh, uh, tool to use. So, so far we've been looking at the ship center environment and how this can help and streamline the uh, shipping operations, but there are some features from ship center that extend over in desktop, uh, which can assist with, uh, uh, for example, shipment quoting uh, at the point of order entry. Uh, so what we're seeing here is I've started a new order for Aaron Fitz Electrical, and I'm going to go ahead and add a line item, and then I'm going to pull in the rate so I can communicate that back to the customer as I'm building out this order. So I'll add a single line item here. And I'll go ahead and save that. And uh, with Ship Center, we add a tab uh, to the sales document uh, labeled Ship Center Shipping Calculator. And when I go into this uh, calculator, I can actually get rates, uh, which will pull back all of the different um, uh, shipping methods or, or shipping services uh, that are available for each carrier. And here you can see, again, I just have the UPS set up in my test environment, but you can see I've got second day air, uh, early AM, second day air, standard, three day select, ground, next day air. And I can see the, uh, the list amounts um, that would be charged for each one of those services. Um, if I wanted to set a rate for uh, this particular order, I can go ahead and pick the service I want to use and set that rate and that will populate here in my freight uh, window on the sales document. Uh, so that's one of the nice features that is extended from Ship Center into the SalesPad desktop environment if you ever have uh, scenarios where you need to quickly uh, communicate uh, different services and the rates that are associated with those services for an order that you're building out for a customer. So um, in addition to that, uh, we, we have the ability to forward documents uh, from, from Ship Center through different queues as those shipments are processed. So this is my basic workflow and my shipping queue, uh, this is what I had Ship Center pointed to look at. Um, so just scroll down, this is my shipping queue. Uh, so that's, that's the orders that are available to ship. And once those are completed, as you recall, I had them set to automatically forward to the batch to invoice. And uh, these are the two orders that I was working with today that I processed out and you can see that they have moved uh, from the shipping queue now into the invoice queue and uh, can be ready to be uh, uh, posted. I can open these up and, and move those on uh, to the invoicing phase. And another quick uh, note here, uh, the tracking number uh, is also automatically written back. So when we're processing uh, orders through Ship Center, it's automatically going to write that back uh, to the uh, tracking number tab as well. So uh, today we kind of covered uh, uh, Ship Center, uh, just a kind of a general overview and how you can uh, leverage this module to really uh, do all of the functions and, and, and things that need to be done in your shipping department all on that one platform, uh, that one application. You don't have to have any additional 
uh, applications such as UPS World Ship or FedEx Ship Manager running in the background. Uh, we're going to pull all that information in for all of the, those carriers into one environment and allow you to operate with it. So, um, and then again, uh, we have extended functionality that goes over into the desktop environment, such as rate quoting, uh, writing back uh, information, reference information back and forth, such as tracking numbers, and then again forwarding it to new queues once you finish the process. Uh, finish the processing within the ship center environment. I uh, hope you found this useful. Uh, again, there's a question box. Uh, please feel free to continue to use that. We're going to jump to those questions now and uh, get answers back to you. And uh, anything we can't answer uh, right now, we'll go ahead and make sure we uh, get an email sent to you. Uh, thank you again for your time.